Tomatoes, potatoes, blueberries. Summertime favorites, not just for people, but bumblebees too. These crops and many others rely exclusively on bumblebees for pollination. But in recent decades, bumblebee populations have declined by as much as 96%. Some Seattle gardeners are trying to find out what effects that might have. The Urban Pollination Project it is a citizen science project um, that's seeking to find out two things. Number one is how bumblebees are faring in the city of Seattle. And number two is um, how bumblebees are doing at pollinating crops that we grow in urban gardens in Seattle. We have every gardener grow three tomato plants that are all, you know, start, start out in our greenhouse and are all the same. One plant is covered with this netting that excludes pollinators. This simulates what the future could look like without bumblebees. The second plant is open to the pollinators that are available in the environment. So the bees that are available are allowed to do their job. The third plant is where things get a little strange. And then the third treatment um, receives extra hand pollination with a tuning fork. Surprisingly, a tuning fork vibrates at the same frequency as a bumblebee buzzes. That vibration causes flowers to release pollen. So, which plant grew the least tomatoes? The plants that were cut off from bumblebees and tuning forks. And so that shows, indeed, like poll pollinator visitation is limiting the number of tomatoes that we can get. And which plants produce the most tomatoes? The tuning fork tomatoes. But is hand pollinating tomato plants one at a time actually a feasible plan B? Yes. Bees do so much. One out of every three bites of food that we eat requires pollination. If we actually had to go out and hand pollinate all of those crops, it would hugely increase the price of those foods in the supermarket. Bees are cheap labor and they, they really contribute a lot to our um, food security and the quality of our diets.